Hi, I'm Chef Anna with Growing Chefs Ontario, and today for Agri Food Week, I'm making cultured butter using fresh Ontario dairy. So cultured butter is a little bit different than the butter that we buy at the store because we're adding a beneficial bacteria back into the dairy and letting it sit for 18 to 36 hours. The taste will be a little bit tangy, but not too much. Kind of similar to the difference between eating a sourdough bread versus a yeasted bread. So let's wash our hands and get started. For the equipment we will need, a jar with a tight fitting lid, two bowls, a fine mesh strainer, cheesecloth, measuring spoons, a clean dish cloth, a food processor or a stand mixer, or a large jar with a tight fitting lid, parchment paper, a spatula, and you might also want a bench scrape. The ingredients for cultured butter are pretty simple, but time and temperature are also big contributors to whether our butter succeeds or not. For this recipe, we will need four cups of Ontario heavy cream without stabilizers or additives, half a cup of plain cultured whole milk yogurt or buttermilk, a quarter teaspoon of fine sea salt, 24 hours of thyme and ice water. To start our cultured butter, we are going to take our four cups of heavy cream and we're gonna pour it into a bowl or if you have a larger jar, that would work too. So the cream I'm using today is not homogenized. So that means that you will get cream that is risen and solidified at the top and that's what uh, splashed when I added it to my bowl. And here I have my half cup of cultured yogurt. It's important that we use a cultured yogurt because we want that live bacteria and that's what's going to thicken our cream. And now I just want to whisk it together so we can get the yogurt integrated and we can get the fat in our cream integrated as well. Now that it's well mixed, we need to leave it to sit in a room temperature, not too hot, not too cold room, and covered loosely with a clean cloth. And we're gonna leave it at room temperature for 18 to 36 hours. So here's my cream that I made yesterday. And let's check it out. You can see that it's a lot thicker than the one I just mixed up, and this is what exactly what we are looking for. And if we didn't take this any further, this is actually called creme fraiche, and it's similar to sour cream. After your cream has sat for 18 to 36 hours and it is thick like this, you need to chill it for about one hour before we continue with our butter making process. You can chill it for much longer than that, but take it out of the fridge and let it sit for about 15 minutes before continuing. Now we have a few options of how to churn our butter. You can use a food processor, you can use a stand mixer, or you can use a very large jar and your arm muscles to make it happen. I'm gonna use a food processor. I like using a food processor because I don't overwork my muscles and I'm not gonna get cream all over my kitchen like I might if I used a stand mixer. Depending on a few factors, this process may take three minutes all the way up to 10 minutes. If things don't seem to be coming together in the first few minutes of mixing, don't get discouraged, just give it a little bit more time. When you get to the point of mixing your butter and the curds have started to pull away from the whey, you are ready to go to the next step. Make sure you have a fine mesh strainer and cover it with a piece of cheesecloth like that. Make sure there is a lot of overhang around your bowl. And now we can dump our butter mixture into our bowl. Our butter has strained into our bowl. And if you look underneath, you can see a beautiful liquid that is buttermilk and it is liquid gold. So make sure you don't throw it out. You can use it in pancakes, waffles, scones, almost any place you use dairy, but want a bit of a tang. I'm, I let my butter drip for about one to two minutes, 
just to make sure I'm getting off all the buttermilk. And then you want to gather the edges of your cheesecloth and squeeze out the last of it. We really wanna get off as much buttermilk as we can. I've placed my strained butter back in my bowl and I put my buttermilk in a jar for safekeeping because I'm gonna use it in pancakes later. Now we have to wash our butter. There's still a bit of buttermilk in and around the butter and we wanna get off as much as we can to help preserve it and so that we taste the fat and not the buttermilk. To wash our butter, because it's very soft, we're gonna use ice water. And you may have to do this three or four times depending on how much buttermilk is still left on your butter. So about a third of a cup of ice cold water poured over your butter and using your spatula, mash it around. And see how cloudy it is in my bowl? We are looking for clean water. So after you've mashed it around a little bit, you can strain off the water and keep rinsing, mashing, straining until you receive clean water. I've been working on this butter for about 10 minutes and I've almost gone through two liters of ice water. I've started using my hands to mold the butter because the ice water has made our butter harder and easier to work with. So now my water is clean and I'm ready to dry my butter. Take a clean dish towel and lay it on your table. Drain your butter well and just gently pat it. You could also use a paper towel if you didn't want to get one of your dishcloths dirty. And our butter is finished. So from here, we can add a little bit of salt or other flavorings you might like. For this amount of butter, I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. And to do that, I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. And then I'm gonna knead it with my hands. You can do this on a surface, like your countertop, or you can use it, do it in a bowl. As you're mixing your butter, you might notice more water start to come out of it. That's great. Just gently pat it off before we move to our next stage in shaping our butter. To shape our butter today, I'm gonna to use a piece of parchment and my bench scrape. If you've never used a bench scrape before, this is what it looks like and it's very good for baking because you can cut things very easily. Take your mound of butter and put it kind of in the middle of your parchment. And we wanna shape it kind of into a log shape. And if it's a little too soft, you can put it in the fridge for 10 minutes or so just to harden it up a little bit. Once you've kind of got into mostly a log shape, fold over your parchment and kind of tuck it under and you can Use this to mold it a little bit better as well. Now time for the bench scrape. Take your bench scrape and kind of work around. This takes a little bit of practice, so don't worry if you don't get it at first. And sort of press in at the base of your butter to make a round log. Roll your butter back up. You can twist the edges. And now you put it in the fridge and take it out whenever you need it. 